couple more minutes. Give folks a chance to hop on and we'll start. All right, it is two o'clock. Welcome to my basement um, and to our weather lesson for today. I'm coming to you live um, from my basement. Um, and so all of you guys are aware, um, it's just as crazy at my house as it likely is at yours. Um, I have three kids. I've got a baby who's supposed to be napping but is refusing to do so today. Yes. Um, and I've got a five and a seven year old. And right now is usually about the time that we start working on some schoolwork um, or working on a little bit more schoolwork that we had already started this morning. Um, and uh, so they're upstairs trying to work on some assignments, um, I hope. And if I get interrupted, then I get interrupted and that's life. So this, this whole concept of doing these uh, Facebook Lives, um, well, Facebook Lives I know, but from my basement, doing weather lessons is new to me. Um, and I'm using um, Zoom. So that's also a little bit of a new concept for me. So if you see me fumbling around, I apologize in advance. Um, but hey, we're all in this together, right? Um, and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about forecasting. Um, because in general, when we're talking about um, weather forecasting, at least for my job, well, I'm on TV telling you what the weather is, um, that's at the heart of what I do. So I thought we'd go over an overview of all the different things that we have to look at when we're talking about forecasting in the world of weather. So I thought I'd start with some of the things that I do when I first get into work. And that is, I look at all of the current things that are going on. So right, what are some of the things that dictate what you do during the day? Well, I think the first thing that a lot of people want to know about is going to be temperature. So I go and I look at all of the current conditions that are out, not only here for the front range, but also all across Colorado. That tells me a couple of things. It tells me where we're starting. I can also then put that up against what the models are saying for where we are starting and see if we're agreeing and, or how far we're off, if there's any anomalies going on. For example, maybe one spot is really, really cold in the morning. Sometimes we see that in places. When that happens, oftentimes they're under what's called a temperature inversion. Um, also, if a lot of folks are seeing uh, fog over them, then their temperatures are going to be cooler. So I like to look at um, what is going on with temperature. And this is really important for a lot of people too, because temperature dictates not only just how you're spending your day, but also whether you're, if you're painting, if you have to paint something, temperatures need to be at a certain spot in order for the paint to be able to dry. Um, it also, other things that dictate that, planes flying, for example, in the summer. I know we've had a couple of really hot summers across the country where it got so hot that planes couldn't take off. So it really is a critical element to how we operate day to day is taking a look at temperature. So that's one of the things that I am looking at when I first get on. The other big thing that I'm looking at is also going to be the radar screen. Now, right now it looks pretty quiet, right? Sometimes though it doesn't. And I need to know where it's raining, who is going to be impacted or who is being impacted. And then I can take a deeper dive into this and see who's seeing more intense rain or snow, possibly look at who's seeing hail, and that way I can see what's happening so I can pass that information and message along to you. In the spring and summer, that plays a huge impact on our safety because you need to know if you're gonna have hail coming towards your area, how close it is 
so that you can take the necessary measures, precautions to make sure that you stay safe, right? So if hail's coming to your area, you need to know that that's happening and it's coming your way um, so that you can get inside. Or if there's a thunderstorm coming, you need to know if you need to be inside. Also need to know if there's snow that's quickly on the horizon. So I'm looking at all of those things when I'm looking at live radar. I also not only look at it here for Colorado, but across the country, because as you guys know, other places will see things happening there first before it comes and hits us. Um, so radar is a really a big issue on this. The other thing that I like to point out on this screen that I can see is our watches and warnings. The watches and warnings that we see for weather are not issued by people like me um, at your television stations. They're issued by the National Weather Service. They will issue, whether it be a winter storm watch, a, a winter storm warning. They'll also issue um, severe thunderstorm watches, tornado watches, tornado warnings. All of those things get issued by the National Weather Service. But it is my job as a communicator to be able to pass that information along, along to you, again, so that you can stay safe. Um, and so this, all those blue and red boxes that you're seeing there on your screen, those are the watches and warnings. And I can see right now they're in place to the north of us, but that system's headed our way. I'm sure that you've seen in the forecast that we've got a little bit of rain and snow coming. When we take a live look at it, you can actually see that, that system start to shape up. I've got the radar in motion and you can see how some of the snow showers are starting to intensify, becoming a little bit more scattered. Um, some of that white starting to fill in to our Northwest. So I can see that system evolving as it's making its way towards us. One of the other things that we also look at, and this is super important, especially in spring and summer here in Colorado is humidity. We all know it's really dry. We live in an arid state, so it's going to be dry here most of the time. Um, our humidity, when we get it, it's very relative. For folks who are watching out there who have lived out in the Midwest, you know that the humidity here is not, not really humidity, but a little bit goes a long way for us when we're talking about storms. But the other really important thing that, that, uh, that I'm looking at with humidity is how low it goes. Because once it gets to a certain point, then we start getting into fire danger territory. And we know that since we can become very dry here in Colorado, we can get a high fire danger quite frequently. And we really need to be mindful of that, especially during the spring and also the summer. So humidity is one of those really important things that I look at. The other thing that I look at is wind. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but I do not like being out in the wind um, on it on any particular day it just sucks all the energy out of you but this i need to know is as i'm preparing my forecast where it is windiest if it's windy um so right now we're seeing some pretty strong wind gusts that are just off to our west in our foothills it's a little bit breezy in broomfield and also over at monument hill but wind tells me a lot about how that part of our day is going to go wind direction also plays a pretty critical role in forecasting Okay, so we'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, another thing that we're looking at is visibility. Sometimes in the morning you wake up and there's fog. So I like to look at my visibility map so I know who's most impacted. Um, and that gives me, me an idea of what I need to communicate to you all. So visibility is something that we watch. And then we get into forecasting, right? So when I'm covering when I'm covering weather across Colorado, I'm covering weather for most of the state. Now there's a couple of other markets that will focus on certain parts of Colorado. Like we've got a market that's out on the Western Slope and Grand Junction. And then we've got another market that covers a lot of Southern Colorado down around Colorado Springs. But here in Denver, we're covering our Northern and Central Mountains, parts of the Southwest, the Northeast, and even parts of Southeast Colorado. So knowing what's going on across the state is pretty important. And when we're putting together a forecast, we are also looking at these things called weather models. And there are several different models that give us an idea on what is going on that we can look at. This one in particular that I have up is the HER. Um, it's a high resolution model. It is one that does not go very far out. So different weather models have, are stronger in telling us different aspects of the forecast. Each model will be a little different than the other one. Um, you'll probably, you likely will hear us talking a, a little bit about that on the air sometimes. Um, but some of them also don't look out as far. 
this one that we're looking at right now only goes out a few hours, while some will go out days. So it's good for me as a forecaster to be able to look at all of the different models and I'll write down on a sheet what's going on. I'll look at all the different models to give me uh, a general idea of what will be happening coming up for us. This one you can see, um, as I mentioned, only goes out a short period of time. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and you can see it actually shows some of the rain that we might see a little bit later on um, today. So I'll go over it a couple times and I'll look at the areas that this particular model is impacting. And then I'll take it out as far as it can go. <clears throat> it can go. Um, and also important to know that when these models are giving us a forecast, um, it's nice that they'll show us specific areas where the model thinks it's going to rain or where we may see a thunderstorm or where we may see snow. But we really need to look at that as a general idea because not one single model is going to get it specifically right. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So when we're looking at these forecast models, it tells us a couple things. Timing, it tells us a general idea on where some of these storms will happen. And it'll also give us a general idea on type of rain, snow, or thunderstorm. This next one you can see looks really different, doesn't it? So this is something called the GFS. This one goes out a long way. The model we just looked at went, went out a very short period of time. This one goes out a long period of time. So it can cover 10 plus days, which is great. But the further out you go, the less accurate it's going to be. So this really gives us some general ideas. And it also looks different because it look, in my opinion, it looks a little bit more um, blobby. It's not a technical term. <laughs> But you can see how it paints on some snow and then it really spreads it out and it, it and out onto our eastern plains by Thursday as that system moves through and then it exits and it moves out. Um, so that is, if you were to take this as that was going to be one huge snowstorm, that would be pretty intense. But we know because of this particular model that it's not going to be that specific per area. Um, and as a meteorologist going through a lot of the classes that I've gone through and learning about these things, those are, those are some of the things that I consider when I'm putting together a forecast. So you have to consider the different types of models that are being run, how long they are, and something called, when I talk about where the storms are gonna be, it, it's, it's gonna be grid points. Now this one, see how much more specific it is with its rain? Its grid points are a bit smaller so it has an ability to paint on a more specific picture on where the showers are going to be. Whereas the GFS, its grid points are not nearly as small, they're much larger. So when it paints on the rain and the snow, it's going to cover a much larger area. So this model I like to use for a general idea on when storms are going to be coming and what type of rain uh, precipitation, so rain, snow, showers, thunderstorms that we're going to see. Um, also, when I when I look when I'm looking at a lot of this stuff, I like to look at. Oh, now it's going to go through all this for me. Go to the end. I like to look at multiple layers of the atmosphere. Right, it's not all that's going on at the surface, but there's a lot at play from here all the way up high to space that impacts what is going to happen in our weather. One great example of that is our jet stream. So I like to look at the jet stream forecast to see the general movement of storms, cold air that might be diving in and where all of this is coming from. Um, this particular jet stream, I've got the highs and the lows that are painted on there for you, but you could basically see, if you follow say the green line, that's where some of the strongest winds aloft are going to be. That's our jet stream, those really strong winds that sit 30 to 40,000 feet above us. That's where some of the strongest winds aloft are going to be. And they dip down in this run all the way over the Western United States and then go up near Chicago and then down again out across the East Coast. And that's outlining troughs and ridges. And that tells me where the storm systems are and where the cold air is. 
the jet stream carries our storm systems across the United States from west to east. And as you look at its shape, you can see the path that some of those storms are going to take. And that is one of the reasons why I like to look at the jet stream forecast. Tells us a few other things, but in general, that's, what it'll, that's why I like to look at it. Um, the other thing that I like to look at, um, the, the other thing that I'll do, and you guys, I think that you can see this, is I'll put this all on a forecast sheet. Every forecaster probably does this differently, but I like to list all of the different models that are here. And I'll put all the data and all the details, I'll write it in. And then I also like to look at what the National Weather Service is saying. Uh, because the National Weather Service, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, is another set of meteorologists who issue our watches and our warnings and give us that critical information that helps us to stay safe. This is the National Weather Service's webpage. You can see all of the watches and the warnings that have been issued out there um, uh, across the country from it. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this northeast part because that's our office out of Boulder. These guys are great. Um, they are wonderful at communicating with us at uh, the different, different types of weather that may be headed our way. They issue various forecasts, discussions that we can read, um, because as a forecaster, um, I like to think that I'm going to be right every time. But I also like to get other opinions because I want to know, quite honestly, if I've missed something too and what other people are thinking uh, as I'm putting my forecast together. In this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to Pueblo's office because we have a red flag warning and fire weather watches that are out. So those are some things that I would likely include in my forecast to talk about the weather that is coming our way for that particular day. The National Weather Service is a great resource um, for all of us when, um, when looking at forecasting um, and also when trying to figure out how, how to keep folks safe. Okay. Now, the other thing that you have to take into consideration when we're talking about Colorado's weather in particular is our geography, because I'm sure as many of you have no, many of you have guessed and can guess, our mountains play a huge role in our weather patterns. Wind comes off our mountains in certain ways that can have an impact on our temperature. It also can have an impact on how storms function. Many of you may have heard us talking about that low that develops in Southeast Colorado, pushes our wind up against our mountains, and that helps to form storm clouds that produce a lot of snow here for the Front Range. And where that low forms will determine where we'll see most of that snow because of our mountains. So you really have to know Colorado's topography um, to help you with the forecast for the day. And once you put all of that together, um, then you can make your best guess forecast, right? So a lot of our apps will take maybe one particular model and they'll put the information for that out, the temperature of the day, rain, those kinds of things. But humans have more of an advantage because we can take all of that information together in one and we can put it together, uh, meld it together to make the best forecast for you all. And this is the forecast that we have coming up for our next several days based off of what the jet stream is doing, that system that we saw off to our north and west, where that cold air is and how it's coming in, and then how all of that evolves over the next several days. So your takeaways from this would be, hey, we're looking at some rain and snow moving in, especially tomorrow. Looks like it'll wrap up on Friday and then after that, we should warm up pretty nicely. That 71 on Monday might be pretty close to accurate. However, it may also just be a general idea, which gets me to my next point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off of this screen share here. Okay. And then just make sure you yeah, are still live. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna take this because I have a little, I have a little activity that I would like for all of you to do. So I'm going to flip this screen around. Welcome to my basement, it's really crazy and awesome. Okay, so as you can see, I have a lot of children's toys here, right? <laughs> That's great. However, one thing that we can do when we're talking about uh, forecasting, um, 
And I just showed you that seven days. So this gives you an idea. When I'm within one day of a forecast, much like I'm really close to this big dart, it's really easy for me to take this little ball and toss it and make it somewhere pretty close to the bullseye. So my forecast one day out is going to be much more accurate, right? Because I'm really close to seeing a storm system that is just about ready to hit Colorado. Now let's go two days out. I'm gonna step out. We'll take my ball and I'm gonna try and toss it in. Oh, all right. That could have a reflection on my athletic skills, but I promise you as you get further and further away, three days out, it gets a lot harder to hit the target. Oh man, I promise when I practiced this, it went a lot better. So now let's go to, let's go four, five, six days out. This is gonna be really fun. Okay, I'll take this and, oh, okay. So you can see, you can see that was one day out. That was two days out. You start getting to three days out, it gets a little bit shaky. And then certainly five to seven days out, it gets a lot harder as well. So that is very similar to when we're doing our forecast for the day. It just makes it much more difficult the further out you go to hit the target. So that's why I say when you're looking at a forecast that goes more than three days out, it's really just going to be a general idea of what is happening um, and what we're expecting to happen. I can get kind of close to that target but I'm not gonna hit it directly on the money. So what I want you guys to do as we, after I ask all these questions, if you're at home and you're with a parent, I'd like you to go out with your parent. If you have a, a dartboard like I have, um, that's also great to use, but see see how good your skills are um, at tossing that ball and hitting a, hitting a small target and step further and further away and see how close that you can get. And then that'll give you an idea on forecasting and how forecasting works, especially um, for the next five, seven, and even 10 days. So that is going to wrap it up for me. Oh, I went 21 minutes. I'm sorry, I went a little bit over. Um, but if you all have any questions, uh, let me go to my news's Facebook page and I will see. Um, see if you guys have any questions and I can answer them. I hope you all are doing really well at home. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, it's super stressful. It's been super stressful for me, um, but uh, we're all hanging in there. We're doing the best that we can do, right? Okay. So I'm not seeing too much in the way of questions. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did on this, um, on this lesson. We're going to have a whole lot more coming your way. Um, and we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be refining these subjects. So we're not just going to be talking about forecasting, but we'll be talking about different aspects of the weather as well. But thanks so much for joining me. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Enjoy the nice weather. We do have a storm system coming. I see that's a couple of the questions that we have out there. We do have a storm system that is coming. It is going to get a little bit colder. We've got some rain and snow that's on the way. I know Kathy's gonna be covering that a lot in her forecast coming up this evening as well. So I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Again, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Bye.